Good morning. This is Bill from Auto Europa Naples, and today we have a big storm stirring off to the southwest corner, coming in hot, going to be nasty. Uh, the air is still and muggy, but uh, we're going to get through it before it happens. And what I've got today is this 2007 Lincoln Town Car Executive L. Uh, you know, anyone who followed my videos for any amount of time, and God knows I really appreciate it. God bless you and, you know, God help you. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, anyone who did that knows that I have a thing for town cars. I, I can't help it. I just always have. It's one of the few cars that I've actually owned personally. Uh, you know, before I got into the car business, obviously I had to own a car like, you know, everyone else who wasn't in the car business. And one of those was a Lincoln Town Car. And I've never gotten over it. I've always loved it. I was quite a young guy at the time. I got a lot of jokes about, you know, golfing and, you know, being uh, a little old before my time. And that's all fine. I didn't care because I was rolling in the height of luxury. Uh, very, very chipper at the time. But that really isn't the point of this car. And this one is, again, 2007 Town Car Executive L. And what that means is that this is a fleet owned a livery vehicle. Oh, you hear that thunder. Uh, this was not even available to the public. This was a car that you had to have a Ford fleet number to buy. You had to have a limo service. You had to have a taxi company. Uh, you know, you had to in some way be uh, you know, running a fleet service. And this particular one uh, is a very low mileage, privately owned limousine. It was used just for one guy for all its life. Uh, I can't tell you who that guy is because, frankly, I don't know. But uh, I do know that it was a uh, privately held limousine uh, here in southern Florida and is in incredible condition with very low miles. Uh, it's finished in the one color that it should be, that's black. Uh, a lot of these cars up north were finished black inside as well but down here you know we like a light interior so it's tan now one thing that this car does that's absolutely incredible and there's very few cars that can pull this off and that is outclass a Mercedes-Benz S-Class for less than half the money forgive the mist on the car I can't stand it I can't stand it look at this you can't write left-handed either. Anyway, there's my name as drawn by a two-year-old. Uh, anyway, uh, very few cars can actually outclass a town car, and this is, look at that, I was zoomed in. This is one of them, and the reason being, you know, when you pull up somewhere, you know, you're at an event, you're at a meeting, I mean, the cheesiest people are going to pull up in a stretched limousine. Let's face it, I mean, it's for, you know, it's for going to prom, and if you show up in an S-Class, you might well be Euro trash or something. If you're a true power broker, if you're a true, you know, guy who wields holds, uh, you know, enough power to have people live or die at your command, you're going to show up in the back seat of one of these things because it is understated, elegant, it blends in, it doesn't draw too much attention to itself, and at the same time provides a very stately and regal appeal. Uh, you know, it pulls up in front of courthouses, in front of uh, bank buildings, in front of, you know, the World Trade Center, well, not anymore, but you know what I mean. Uh, you know, this thing was and is... Uh, still one of the most epic vehicles of all time. Uh, now, being the executive L, that means it is stretched right from the factory. It has six extra inches, and frankly, it looks and feels more like 16. Uh, look at the length of that rear door. Absolutely incredible. And uh, if you're looking for legroom, well, you know, you're going to have no trouble putting the Harlan Globetrotters back there. They're going to be thrilled. So uh, no uh, issues for the Canadians at all. But we'll get into the inside in a moment. Uh, one thing that blows me away is the original incredible condition of this car. Uh, you know, it's very tough to find one that hasn't been abused in livery service. Uh, you know, you see them out there with two, three, four. There are guys who have put seven or 800,000 miles on these things. And that is the way they are built. It's a Ford Panther platform. It's been around for decades or had been. Uh, you know, it's a body on frame. Uh, by the time this one rolled around, it had some really important upgrades like a hydroshock formed front frame. Uh, they moved from the old uh, reciculating ball 
uh, recirculating ball uh, steering rack to a much more modern and nimble rack and pinion unit. Got the 4.6 uh, V8 that's not super high horsepower but is incredibly reliable. And uh, anyway, the styling, the styling. I mean, these things are just still running all over New York City, all over Washington, D.C. Uh, you know, I mean, you could be Henry Kissinger in the back of this thing. Right, let's have a look in the trunk. Now, here is one good reason why this thing is used for livery service. It has a trunk from the 1950s. Absolutely enormous. You see also a full-size spare tire because it simply won't do if, God forbid, you know, you're driving Barbara Streisand to the Miami airport and the tire blows, you better get the proper tire on there fast, not just for appearances, but you definitely got to keep going fast on the highway. So uh, full-size spare there, great little compartment in here where uh, you're going to have, what is that, a second spare? Oh my God, I didn't even realize that. So the car <laughs> has a full-size spare and a uh, very nice uh, temporary spare off to the right. So you're gonna have no trouble in this one. Uh, all your uh, jacking stuff over there, beautiful deep trunk, loads of suitcases, whatever you need, all gonna be perfect. I don't know if that's factory or if the guy added a full size spare. Either way, that's kind of cool. Have a look under the hood. Okay, so again, being the livery version, uh, and I love the way that comes out, you could use it to lift. You probably shouldn't, but I do. Uh, this is a uh, you know somewhat beefed up version of the 4.6. Uh, it's got uh, you know oil cooler. It's got uh, bigger alternator. Incredibly reliable engine, incredibly easy to maintain. It just goes and goes and goes and goes and goes. There's a million parts out there. It's cheap to run. Uh, you know, this is part of what has made this thing an incredible favorite of livery companies everywhere. Uh, you know, they just pay for themselves again and again and again. They run this car, they run it, they run it, they run it. It doesn't need much. If it needs an engine, it's cheap. If it needs a transmission, it's cheap. Uh, you know, fantastic mechanicals under the hood of this car. Also being in 07, this has the most modern updated look. So the last year of this car was 11. Look at that, we have a miss aligned, that would drive me nuts, uh, hood ornament there. Anyway, the, through 11, this car looked identical with that same sort of offset grill curving inward both directions. Very, very attractive, lovely headlights. You know, this thing is just so damn stately when it pulls up, and uh, that is truly the point. You know, Cadillac tried. They had for a long time. They had their body on frame stuff, but, you know, when it went to front wheel drive, it was over. Uh, you know, Chrysler pathetically tried to make a K car limousine. That worked like crap. Nobody had any interest in that, and uh, just since, you know, the beginning, anyway. You know, there's only been three generations of town car. That's another thing people don't realize. The thing only came out in, like, 1980. Uh, you know, town car was a name that they used before that on other models like the Continental, but there was never an actual proper town car until the first boxy generation in the 1980s. There was even a coupe for, you know, fruitcakes, but uh, anyway, so not too many of these things in terms of uh, decades and decades of history, but uh, what history it has. Uh, yeah, you can imagine how many business deals have been closed in these, how many, you know, people sent to their deaths, how many newspaper articles. Uh, you know, these things just pull up everywhere and make people think something important is going on, even if it isn't. Beautiful alloy wheels riding nice Michelin tires. Oh, God, I, don't, I could go on about this thing. Executive L, I love it. Okay, here in the back seat, uh, you can see everything nice and mint. Uh, whoever was being uh, driven around in this thing obviously didn't weigh a lot. Maybe it was a female. Uh, well, that doesn't change anything. Anyway, whoever it was, they didn't beat up the back seat too much. Uh, you can see the beautiful uh, trim and fit and fit. You know, it's not, it is certainly not S-Class level. I'm sure this isn't real wood. I'm sure that's plastic, although it does a nice job of emulating it. Very simple leather door pull. You know, you got an ashtray there because they might smoke. You never know. It could be rock stars. A uh, little map pocket there. You got, the, again, the fantastic amount of leg room. You got these little, little pockets at the back of the seat. And now this is all cool stuff. So we've got uh, your cup holders there. This guy pulls down. This gives you uh, audio remote control. Uh, this will run the uh, passenger seat forward and back when the car is running. A little place to put a tissue box. Very, very nice stuff. 
uh, you get two 12 volt outlets for your you know various computers so again if you're uh, you know a third world dictator in, in New York you can plug in your iPad and send your Air Force out to kill somebody uh, and anyway all very very nice stuff uh, it fits three in the back if you need to uh, also three in the front that's a thing that's long been gone in the in the world of cars and uh, everything just beautiful back there on the back is what the car is all about. Uh, you can see it has the uh, traditional Ford code on the door. Uh, in fact, let's see if they do it. Most town cars had that code written on the inner trunk hinge. At least mine did back in 92. Nah, this one, uh, so they stopped that. That's a shame. It was real easy to get the code that way. Anyway, we got the books inside, so we have the code. Okay, up front, you know, and again, this is where your worker is going to sit, so it really shouldn't be that important. Uh, you know, now maybe, you know, private guy buys this, he's going to drive it around, so it does have to be pretty damn comfortable. And it is, again, lovely finished door panels, you know, very elegant, very proper, nice window switches with nickel surrounds, uh, you know, your power mirrors, your... Uh, I love the seat uh, seat shaped seat shaped switch. That's hard for me to say. Uh, you know, very Mercedes Benz style. Uh, you've got a trunk and gas release. This is lockable. That's why it's got a little key there. You got a great little map pocket here. Then you know you can put in your nine mil if you got to defend the guy in the back seat. And uh, everything just really proper and lovely. Uh, the leather's in incredible condition, been beautifully maintained. This has never been touched up or, you know, worked on. Absolutely perfect leather in this car. You've got, you know, two master keys, two fobs, and a valet. It's just nice to get such a clean, untouched one owner car. Let's fire it up. Always one handed, I'm telling you. To find a way to. This just can't be done. I have to find a way to attach this thing to my head. All right, so let's get some AC going. First, I'll put a defrost on. Look at that. What a muggy, humid Florida morning. I'm telling you, God, thank God it's getting to be August. It's, uh, you know, August means it's almost September. September means it's almost October. And October means the weather almost gets better. So we're on the way. All right, so let's run this back down. Auto, get some nice chilly air conditioning going. And now I will tell you this, something that's cool about these town cars is they have Toyota quality air conditioning. Uh, and by that I mean it is freezing. So it's a very nice way to beat the heat down here. Okay, here you can see a lovely multifunction wheel. Uh, gives you your volume, your climate control on this side. It gives you your cruise on this side. Nice tight leather. The wheel's not too fat like it is in the Chrysler 300. Just nice to grip. Uh, you've got a column shift right out of the 1960s. I absolutely love it. And what that does is give you uh, three across here in the front seat. So if you got a, you know, let's say you got one town car for the chic in the back and then the six guys are gonna be up here in this one. You know, it'd be kind of a cheap chic to run six guys in one town car, but you never know, cost cutting, who knows what's going on. So sometimes you just might have to do that. Uh, you got automatic headlamps over here. You got power adjustable pedals. Uh, you got traction control on and off if you want to do burnouts in the Walmart parking lot while, you know, uh, Henry Kissinger's inside signing a piece of cord. Uh, you got very muted, sort of lovely little gauges, 120 mile an hour speedo, your tack over on the right, your fuel, your temp, and uh, a little driver information center in the middle. Just all you need to know. Uh, again, with the wood and the nickel on the dash, nice, all the way across you've got this analog clock with frankly ludicrous adjustment buttons I mean you know I get that that old people generally drive this but this is just going to offend you know an old guy who thinks you need to have a four inch long you know clock adjust button anyway analog clock the official sign of luxury cars uh, nice and dash uh, CD and cassette proper let's see what we got going commercials commercials uh, you know all works very very nice you've got your climate control down here that's a dual side control uh, over here I can reach it all the way over there you got a nice set of books in the glove box everything proper as it should be uh, down here you have look at that bona fide ashtrays 
Uh, you know, obviously this is a non-smoker car, never been used for that, I'm sure. Yeah, look at that, perfect. Uh, this is probably a little coin purse because it's got, uh, you know, rubber there and then an ashtray here. So, set up for the vintage crowd. You also got a 12 volt outlet down there. You got some more cup holders here. And everyone's going to be happy. Uh, self dimming mirror, you know, lights, uh, adjustable seat belts. Oh, God. I tell you, I just love town cars. God, I really do. All right, let's go for a spin. Hear those doors locking automatically. And let me tell you, man, this thing drives solid. You know, it's heavy, but it's not too heavy, particularly with that rack and pinion upgrade they got. Uh, you can feel the full frame on it. I mean, this thing drives like the Silverado I used to tow a race car around. Uh, you can just feel how firmly planted it is to the ground. Uh, you know, again, it gives you what must be the finest highway ride in world history. I mean, I know the S-Class is there, but this thing was in the $40,000, $45,000 range. I mean, half Half the money with the full frame Panther platform and it delivers, uh, you know, a feel that it just like it takes a bump and just smooths it out. If there's a rock in the road, it just crushes it for you so you don't have to feel it. It is one of the finest riding cars in the world. And again, that is part of what made them such exceptional livery vehicles. The semi doesn't come out and kill us. So, uh, you know, Super responsive steering, you know, light but not too light. Uh, excellent brake feel. I've got the pedals adjusted where I want them. I'm in this, you know, living room style lazy boy that's supportive enough, but at the same time, you feel like you could just recline it all the way and go to sleep. You know, on a side, I remember reading once that Star Trek was such an incredibly American institution because it was basically a guy exploring the universe from his lazy boy watching TV. Uh, you know, kind of a kind of a neat idea. I think uh, you know that is a nice. Yeah, you know, I get he beamed down and you know had sex with green women and stuff, but if he'd have just been a little more lazy, hung out in the lazy boy, he'd had a lot more fun. Uh, anyway, total non sequitur there. Uh, what can I tell you? This is an 07 Lincoln Town Car Executive L, so that means it's a six inch stretch, kind of a uh, mini limo, if you will. Uh, you know, it is one of the classiest, most important, truly one of the most important cars ever made uh, in terms of the things that have happened, you know, around them. The amount of power brokers that are in them, the amount of, you know, the, the well-to-do, the, you know, movers, the shakers, the, you know, frankly, the people who are really pompous and arrogant and irritating rode around in the back of these cars. People use words like flyover country. Uh, but, you know, they know a good thing when they see it. Uh, this was a sign of taste and wealth and class. Let's try not to die here. Let me hammer it a little. Yeah, so I mean, not a rocket ship at all, but certainly adequate to get you down the road. Uh, and there it is. So I could ramble on and on about how much I love town cars, but I'm going to quit doing that and just start enjoying it. So uh, again, 07 Town Car Executive L, uh, 64,000 miles, one owner immaculate Carfax, black over beige. This thing is the one. You're going to have to pry it away from me. I mean, if I had room or the inclination to have a car, uh, you know, somewhere stored for me, this would be it. I love this thing. So, uh, there it is. Thanks for having a look. We appreciate it. We'll see you with the next one.